வணக்கம் நவ் தட் இஸ் ஹவ் மை தமிழ் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் கிரியேட் மீ இந்த லாஸ்ட் டூ செஷன்ஸ் விச் வர் ஆன் சர்வ்லெட் பேசிக்ஸ் ஐ ஹவ் பிரசென்டட் த வேரியஸ் கான்செப்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் சர்வ்லெட்ஸ் த லைஃப் சைக்கிள் ஆஃப் எ சர்வ்லெட் அண்ட் ஆல்சோ ஹவ் த வேரியஸ் வெப் காம்பனன்ட்ஸ் லைக் சர்வ்லெட்ஸ் அண்ட் ஜேஎஸ்பிஸ் வித் இன் அ ஜே டூ டபிள்யூ வெப் ஆப் கம்யூனிகேட் ஆர் ஷேர் ரிசோர்சஸ் வித் ஈச் அதர் திஸ் செஷன் இஸ் ஆன் ஹெச்டிடிபி ரிக்வெஸ்ட் பேசிக்ஸ் அண்ட் ஆல்சோ ஹெச்டிடிபி செஷன் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் by the end of it you should know the basics of a http request and also how a servlet container manages http sessions the various techniques that a web container uses to manage a http session every time you log in to a website like gmail or youtube or facebook your browser is sending a http request to the web application which is serving your browser's request and that http request looks like this it has a header block and it has a body the header block in turn has a http method the first line of a header block looks like this it has a http method a uri and a version the http method if you remember from the last session it could be a get or a post the uri is actually the resource for which this request is going in that could be a validate login.jsp page or validate login.do if you are using stats framework and the version actually is the http version and then followed by host that's the name of your machine a content type it could be html text or file the content length the amount of data that your browser is sending to the server so going back to our example if you use a get method the username and password will be appended to the end of the url separated by an ampersand and the server will retrieve them by using the request dot get parameter if you use a post method this is how the browser will submit the html form the data will go in as a stream or in the http body http request body the header block can also contain cookies which are nothing but strings of alphanumeric characters with this background let's move on to session management when you browse through websites like e-commerce websites like amazon or ebay and you keep adding items to your uh, shopping cart how do you think these web applications like amazon keep track of all the items you have added to your shopping cart that's where http session comes into picture and as you might already know http is a stateless protocol what that means is a request comes in from the browser the server serves the request and the server forgets about that particular browser it doesn't maintain any state unless you as a developer ask the web container to do it for you and how you do it is either through cookies or url rewriting or hidden fields these are the three uh jwt techniques that a web container uses to maintain a http session because http is stateless using cookies all this means is every time a request comes into the server the server along with the response sends back a unique string within the http header it's a alpha numeric string and the browser if it's cookie enabled by default most of the browsers are cookie enabled the browser will store this uh, data in its cache and when it sends the next next request from the same browser window it sends this cookie back and then the server looking at that cookie knows that this particular request is coming from the same browser and it keeps adding the items you send every time to the shopping cart if the cookies are disabled on your browser window for security reasons then you switch to url rewriting and all that means is instead of a cookie the browser appends the unique alpha numeric string or a numeric string to your uh, url or uri and every time a form is uh, submitted from within the html page or you click on a link on the url uh, you click a link the url that formulated will have this unique id and the server gets the unique id back that way it keeps track of your http session again the last one is a hidden field if you are familiar with the html form element you can also specify along with the text a text box 
checkboxes, radio buttons, you can also have hidden fields within your HTML form. So instead of appending it to every URL, you can have a hidden field and uh, the name of it could be a session ID or a JS session ID and then the value of it will be the unique ID that the server generates. So how exactly session management works will be a servlet container or a web container generates a unique string and it uses this alphanumeric string or a numeric string either as a cookie in the HTTP header or every URL that gets generated or whenever a web page gets generated when the servlets or a JSP sends the response back every URL within your page or every form element within your page the action for your form element will have this unique ID that the servlet container creates and when the user clicks the link or presses the submit button this unique ID is sent back every time to the server so that it knows which particular client it is communicating to or which particular browser it is communicating to and it keeps the session intact. It's that simple. So to summarize, now you know the basics of a HTTP request which are HTTP header and the HTTP body. You also know that if you use a getter method, you, all the parameters within your HTML page, like the login the example we took, will be appended to the URI, separated by ampersands. If we use a post method, then the input parameters, the username and password will be sent within the body or the post, uh, post stream, uh, HTTP stream. And there are three techniques to manage sessions, which are cookies, URL rewriting, and hidden fields. And how the web containers maintain uh, sessions on a stateless HTTP protocol are by using a unique alphanumeric or numeric um, value. And this value is communicated back and forth with the browser using these techniques here. If the cookies are disabled, uh, we have to use URL rewriting. And also, we have the option of using hidden fields if it's a form and if you are submitting some data. The next session will be on uh, JSP's one session which will give you an overview of what a JSP page is and then we'll um, do a servlet hands-on and also a JSP hands-on before we move on to core Java topics. Until then, keep sharing and learning. Thanks for watching.